Okay, so today is the day. We finally got a blue post for balance. Things are looking pretty good. Um, all right, let's talk about it, read through it, talk about implications, what it means, things we're excited to see, things maybe we're less excited to see, and just kind of what this blue post is going to end up meaning for Munkin. So, hey there, Munkins. We're working on the next iteration of the balance talent tree, along with some baseline changes that you should see in the upcoming weeks. Players will see some of our changes in next week's build, but the full suite of changes will not be in the beta until the following week. That said, we wanted to give you a quick preview in the meantime. Mastery Total Eclipse has been redesigned to the following. It got renamed to Ma Astral Invocation, and it includes your nature damage... Uh, your nature spells deal increased damage to targets affected by sunfire, and your arcane spells deal increased damage to targets affected by moonfire. With the reasoning of the previous design of Eclipse and Mastery uh, created a situation where the power of the spec was dictated by Celestial Alignment, allowing for double dipping the Mastery bonus. While this is fun, it can take away from the power and feel the spec outside of CDs. With this new Mastery, our goal is to further reinforce keeping your dots active while continuing to allow for Star Surge, Starfall, and Stellar Flare to be able to gain the extra benefit even outside of CDs. So they're keeping the double dipping, but they're changing functionally how it works. In addition to that, Eclipse is no longer a current alteration, no longer have the reduced cast time. And then Lunar Eclipse now increases the damage of your Arcane spells by 15%, and Solar Eclipse now increases the damage of your Nature spells by 15%. Alright, so let's, let's take a second and talk about what this means. On AoE, you're going to have to be Moonfiring a ton, especially if you're casting Starfire a lot. This probably means that things like Twin Moons are a little bit more... Um, Moded just with the uh, the reason that you have to be able to moonfire. This is going to be especially true on like the five target range, maybe even like the three target range. So this is promoting dotting in a more serious manner. On single target, it probably doesn't change a lot. I'm really interested to see what it's going to end up doing to our um, just mastery on AOE in general. I suspect that this may this could even have potential to move us away from a mastery stack spec and move us in more into like a haste stack spec. For specifically AoE around single target, I suspect it's still going to be pretty good because it just kind of depends on the situations in which you're sun firing and moon firing up the whole entire pack. But at the very beginning here, it's promoting you um, dotting everything. In addition to that, now with the changes of eclipses, with this has the reasoning of from reviewing feedback and discussions, we've found two th common themes for eclipses. One, there's a lack of control with the rotation that can feel bad on both single target and AoE. And two, having to cast two empowered abilities, Wraths or Starfires in this case, to enter Eclipse combined with their weaker baseline power and Starfire's long cast time is underwhelming. With these changes, our goal is to allow you to exit, say, Solar, and then re-enter Solar Eclipse by casting two Starfires again. We're also looking at adding talents to improve the feeling of casting unempowered Wraths and Starfires between Eclipses. My tinfoil hat is that Leaf on the Water is going to be one of the talents, which is uh, the Torghast power, which means that, like, Eclipses take one fewer spells to trigger. That's my that's my uh, my tinfoil hat, but I'm not exactly sure. So this eclipse change though is very interesting. I'm I'm not really sure how I feel about it. This is the only thing that I I've, I've seen today that I'm still not sure how I feel about it. But I'm not overtly negative on it. It's more like a I want to play with it and see how how it feels. So on one hand, having more control of your eclipses is nice especially on like AoE situations, you're going to be able to force yourself to stay in Lunar lunar Eclipse, whereas on bosses and single target situations, you're going to be able to force yourself to stay in a Solar and have a little bit more control over when you're uh, rotating those Eclipses just generally. So that's the upside. The downside is like I worry about feeling like I'm stuck in Lunar Eclipse for 30 minutes in a Mythic Plus dungeon and it's still not feeling like it mattering. So how I feel about it right now is I'm alternating Eclipses and I'm playing a talent, Soul of the Forest, that should promote me casting a lot of abilities inside of Lunar Eclipse just generally. Like I should be promoted on AoE by casting a lot more abilities in Lunar Eclipse. But as it currently stands, I don't even feel like I'm being promoted by casting a bunch of abilities in Lunar Eclipse as it currently stands. So I wonder what this is really going to change in regards to feel. So on on that, that's kind of the second point. So on one hand, it's nice that I have more control. On the second point, does it really change anything? Is it really going to change fundamentally how eclipses feel? I'm not sure. I think that this is something that I need to play with and I'm, I'm not really able to make an accurate opinion of it until I see it. I don't think it's bad. I think at minimum it's neutral and I think it has a, a decent amount of upside of potentially being fairly solid. Yeah. Well, let's get into the stuff that people wanted to see. Starfall. It has been redesigned to the following. Instant. It costs 50 astral power. 
and it calls down a wave of falling stars at the targeted area, dealing astral damage over eight seconds. And the notes with this say, we gave a cooldown version of Starfall and a chance for shat... Uh, we gave a cooldown version of Starfall a chance again for Shadowlands, and we don't feel like it's played as well as we had hoped. Having Starfall that moves with you is awesome and something that we had hoped to keep, but for gameplay reasons, we feel like it's better to be able to choose to spend your additional Astral Power on more Starfalls. This was the uh, bringing back this massive radius Starfall that we had uh, back in Warlords of Draenor, back in Mists of Pandaria. It, it, that's what they're referring to. And, and so what we had in Shadowlands is this massive radius starfall that follows you around um, and, and it's attached to your character. What we had in Legion and BFA was this uh, circle, kind of similar to Reign of Fire, if you've played a Warlock, where you would drop it on the ground and you would have starfall work inside of that. And so what they basically said here is that having that starfall that moves with you is awesome, it, and I agree with it, it is. But for gameplay reasons, we feel like it's better to choose to spend additional astral power on more Starfalls. If these are the decisions that Blizzard is forcing the players to make just in general, then it makes a lot of sense that this is the way it's just going to have to be. I do think that Blizzard is a little bit too worried on Moonkin's power, especially on spread AoE situations. My personal opinion is that that's probably not realistically an issue. The spread AoE of specs just across the board is way too weak and moonkin being the best is fine but i think that other specs should be brought up a little bit particularly like shadow and aff however if blizzard believes that it's a balancing issue and it's going to cause more problems than it solves and and this is just one of those things that one of those decisions we have to make is like it has to be a targeted reticle but at the upside of you be able, you're able to spend additional astral power on more starfalls. That's something that we absolutely can take just as a player base because more being able to use your spender on AOE more reliably is going to be pretty important. Next, improved Star Surge has been removed. Star Surge no longer empowers the damage bonus of active eclipses, and the reasoning is uh, it encouraged pooling resources more than we would have liked, and the mechanic was hidden enough for some players to be able to be unaware of the gameplay it encouraged. It, it basically did nothing. In addition to that, it was coming back in the Dragonflight talent tree, and so uh, it, it's actually this node right here, and so by him saying it got removed, it means that some other stuff is going to change with our talent tree just in general. This is fairly positive in my opinion. I think that this is also nice because where this node was was really weird. It was in between three Starfall nodes. And you're like, how? why Why do I need to take this uh, node for increased damage on single target when in reality it's in the middle of a bunch of AoE nodes? And that's kind of how I feel about a decent amount of the Moonkin talent stuff is like, it's not very... It's a lot disjointed. Like the AoE versus single target stuff is not positioned super well. So I suspect loosely... A, a more concrete talent redesign of where things are placed and maybe even potentially a couple of different talent reworks. The last major thing that's being showcased is shooting stars. And it has an increased chance to occur and stellar flare damage now increases a chance to proc shooting stars. With the uh, notes of we do not have plans to increase dot damage, we feel like we went too far in toning down shooting stars, so we're looking for it to allow to trigger more often so that astral power generation from dots is more noticeable on AoE. Stellar Flare's lack of gameplay hooks has made it an underwhelming talent choice, uh, so we're allowing it to trigger shooting stars. Initially, this is sick for Syzygy. If you haven't, if you don't know, Syzygy is this uh, talent for balance that it like shoot, shoots this targeting reticle, it's attached to Celestial Alignment, and it applies Stellar Flare to all the targets in the path. That's great for shooting stars just in general that uh, Stellar Flare now applies it. In addition to this, it doesn't sound like shooting stars is going to have the, the DR, the diminishing returns on the proc rate reduced, but it, uh, it removed completely, but it sounds like it's going to be reduced. And so if it's like a square root three or maybe even like a, a square root five, those are going to be really good things. Even if it is like a square root five, you're not really going to notice it except for in very, very specific circumstances, like 20 targets plus, basically. And so if we do get a less aggressive diminishing returns on our shooting stars, I suspect this is going to be great for us. Basically, what all of this has done has, it's made me feel like I've been heard. And I feel like a lot of the things that are being targeted for changes are the things that needed to be targeted for changes. 
promoting redotting on AoE is, is one of the big ones. Making sure that shooting stars are really nice. Making sure that we have enough astral power on AoE to cast Starfall. Changing Starfall to where we're able to stack it over and over again. And then changing Eclipses to be something that I have more control over. If you ask me some things that I really wanted changing, those are definitely some of them. From here on out, uh, at the bottom of this, it basically says, this is only a small peek at what we're looking on, uh, what we're working on, and by no means a complete change list. Our goal is posting this posting some of the larger more systemic changes in order to gather initial feedback and take that into account when continuing implementing our remaining changes we appreciate the feedback thus far and look forward to hearing more of your thoughts regarding balancer in the upcoming weeks my thoughts these are great changes i suspect that there is still some work to be done specifically with our talent tree just in general there are some nodes that i really do not like and uh just the, how some of this stuff is uh functioning is problematic i think our capstones need a lot of working on as well just making them really feel like capstones beyond that though i i think the like the this post said the systemic changes for how moon can work though and just looking at it at a high level of how it's going to play these have me very excited i'm, I'm super excited to see what's next for the talents and uh i hope you guys are too if you guys have any thoughts as well leave this down in the comment section i'm, I'm interested to hear what you guys think just about Moonkin overall, but I am super, this is a big dub. This is a big dub for Moonkins. I'm excited to play it on the beta whenever it gets released. Make sure you come check out my stream and stuff. Ask me any questions as well. And I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.